James, thank you for uh, recording that uh, exclusive live version of uh, of the greatest for us. Uh, just explain to us how you did it, how it was, uh, how it all came about, how the recording came about. Yes. Um, well, uh, I've uh, I've strapped a few iPhones around me um, and a computer. Um, I've got my um, this is one is on a bit of sellotape actually, um, and uh, <laughs> um, I'm crewing myself. Good, good. Well done. Well, it's absolutely perfect. So you've got a job for life there, uh, <laughs> I think. Uh, the song itself, we played it last week as our record of the week. Uh, it's touched so many people. It's a song that really has come from your heart. Yeah, and thank you so much for playing it um, in the way that you have. You've been incredibly kind. Um, and for me, it's a really meaningful song. You know, I'm, I, I travel the world. I leave my family and my children behind on tour and, and the world as I see it. Um, it is, was becoming a frightening place before we had the coronavirus and now it seems a, a very frightening place just because of our distance really from each other um, and how we're almost more afraid of each other than ever before. Um, and so yeah, the song is for my children to say to them to be um, the best that they can be and, and it really seems that it's the younger generation who, are, who will be our champions now. Do you think your songwriting has changed um, as a result of who you are now, you know, a father, a little bit older, has it changed you? Um, completely, yes. I think before I probably wrote more selfish songs just about myself as the, as the subject matter and now I realise um, that the people who I leave here behind at home um, are, um, are the ones I write about and, and care for much more. And of course uh, you, you've been very open about um, your own father and uh, your relationship with him. That, that's very important, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm really lucky. I come from a very close family, um, despite being sent away to boarding school when I was seven, um, which I do, tell, I do remind them of quite a lot. But that's because my father was away in the army based overseas. Um, and, uh, and, and I suppose despite that distance that I've had as a child, the moment I got into the music business, I really needed family to support me and look after me. And, and I, I'm lucky to have my own little very close family too. And, um, and I think, you know, times like this, um, we're seeing that the saddest moment about what's going on is is people in hospital alone. I think that's when you realise that that's the, the the worst aspect of what's going on. Exactly. Uh, where you are, it's not, not the worst place in the world to be locked down, is it? No, I mean, to be fair, it's not too bad here. Um, we're in Spain, it's very strict lockdown, um, indeed, quite rightly, um, and, and the Spanish have really suffered out here. Um, but uh, but I have a garden, so I'm incredibly lucky. I actually have a, just behind my house a little forest, so I've been um, clearing dead wood. Um, it's a job I've been meaning to do for about 15 years, and uh, and I seem to have time on my hands since the tour was cancelled halfway through. Um, so well, I'll do that until the tour is up and running again. Well, well done for actually doing the jobs that have been waiting for all these months. Most people haven't even got around to those yet, yeah, I think, including myself. Yeah, my, it's, we now have these bizarre conversations wishing that they'd left things like garden centres open. <laughs> <laughs> no, unbelievable. Uh, uh, as you mentioned, the, the tour has had to be cancelled. I bet you'd be really delighted when you can get back on, back on stage. Yeah, it was devastating, really. Um, the, the tour up and running, um, you know, it's a, almost a year's worth of tour and we stopped in Germany when they shut things down. Um, my last show, I played in an empty auditorium um, uh, uh, and we streamed it to all the audience who weren't allowed to come. We streamed it to them at home instead, um, which was a really moving moment. Um, and then we all went home and, and, uh, and yeah, and very sad in, in that way. Fingers crossed, we've reached edge of them, um, and, uh, and hopefully I'll be back. Um, you know, we've got some summer festivals, which we don't know what will happen, but we're really hoping our, um, that the September shows will be back up, and I'll be in the Albert Hall then, um, God willing. Well, we'll all be there cheering you on, I'm quite sure. As many of us has, can get in there. Uh, James, it's, it's great that you've been an inaugural uh, house music thing on Radio 2. It's, it's fantastic. Uh, and you're going to do another song for us now, yeah, I mean, I had a debate. I should do um, a happy song to cheer things up, but you know what? I'm I'm best at misery, and I suppose um, at this time has been related to um, a war in itself, a fight against coronavirus, and it reminded me of when I was in a war in Kosovo in 1999. I wrote a song called "No Bravery," and and although it's 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 a it's a powerful one, but I hope you don't mind me playing it. No, no, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful song. James, such a delight. Thank you so much for doing this for us, and uh, we look forward to hearing more from you. It's Thank a you. pleasure. It's always so nice to then I get to see you in your house and you get to see you in mine. It's a bonus treat <laughs> exactly. rather than seeing you in the studio. Lovely to see you. 
you've got better weather than I have here. Thank, <laughs> thank you, James. Thanks Take care. Bye-bye.